So what's going on guys and welcome back to episode number 89 of our Ports of Cream Mode on the PS4 for 15 and we're going to be kicking off this episode having a look at the season budget and we've got a very hefty budget which I'm very happy about and I'm really hoping we can do our very best to try and sign a lot of new players and I see here we also get our pre-contract player arrival, two players do come in, one is the like of Lucas Digne from PSG and the other one is Julian Draxler from Schalke. So they're two very very promising players that have got very good potential. As you can see here we do actually get a training injury with um, Eric Dyer. He picks up a six-week injury, which is a little bit disappointing because he was probably going to be in kind of our plans. But we were trying. I was thinking about trying to offload him for another player, which we we'll have to wait and see later on this episode to see who we do try to try and go in for. But this is going to be the first squad report of the season. As you hear, a lot of our players are doing very well, and um, we have got quite a few players that are in the high 70s and low 80s now. Actually, they've got like Divo Karigi, Zivkovic, we've also got um, Eric Lamella, um, and um, a lot of players are doing very, very well progressing. Hal uh, Halilovic is also doing very well and Kingsley Coma is just an absolute animal up front and um, he's a lovely player to have in your squad so I would really recommend you guys to go ahead and buy Kingsley Coma if you are starting a new crew mode because to be honest he's one of the best players I've tried in crew mode he is so quick he completely tears the defenders apart and if you guys want a player that is quick up front has got really good potential and has got a good shot that can play on the right wing left wing cam and up front um, he is a man for you. But actually, that Julian Draxler is an 82 rated uh, left mid 24-year-old. Um, so he's hopefully going to be doing very well. And also, Lucas Digne is a 79 rated 24-year-old uh, right back, a uh, left back, sorry. So he will probably be taking the place of Lucas Hernandez. So our long-term player will uh, unfortunately be moving to the bench. But the first player we do decide to go in for is Junior Melanda from Fiorentina. He's 82 rated. Unfortunately, he is no longer with us anymore because of a tragic crash where he ended up um, dying very, very sadly but um he is such a good player such promising talent and that is the reason why I decided that I really wanted to go in for Junior Melanda. So I was really hoping we could try and convince Fiorentina to let him go. I thought Fiorentina were going to really do their very best to try and hold on to him because of how good he was and how young he was. And he's probably going to have a lot of uh, more potential. And um, he would be the perfect player to sit in our centre defensive mid role um, to control the team. The next player we do decide to go in for is Cal Hanoglu, the uh, very, very um, skillful um, player from Bayer Leverkusen. He's only 24 year old in game. So so he's about 20 years old at the moment. He's 80 rate and we decide to offer 7.5 million plus Vitinha just to see if we can convince uh, Bayern Leverkusen to let their um, cam uh, leave the club. But as she here, uh, Fiorentina do actually come back to us and say sorry we won't let Junior Melanda go. So we decide to offer 4 million plus Sammy Amiobi I believe. Um, so uh, Vitinho, sorry, we decided to up with Vitinho plus seven million just to see if we can try and convince him to leave the club because we we're trying so many times, but just they just kept coming back and saying we won't accept. Also, by Leverkusen do come back and say sorry, we won't accept it because seven point five million plus Vitinho is not enough. They're not interested in the player, and the transfer sum on its own is not big enough. So we decided to offer, um, I think it's Michel Mandron plus seven point five million, and uh, hopefully that one was trying to try and convince him to leave the club. But um, we also accept a deal for Cedric De Jugo. Uh, I'm not really sure how you pronounce his name, but he's a player that we signed right in the very first season. He hasn't gone up whatsoever. I thought he would be quite reasonable, but still, he hasn't gone up. Horacio Sanchez is also going to be leaving on loan to Northampton, so it's just another player off the books and just to um, free up a little bit more wages, which would be good. Um, once again, they do come back and say, sorry, we won't let him go because he is a real crucial first in player at their at their squad and as you say there it says he is one of our key players and they want between 19 and 24 million for him and we just haven't got that sort of money but we do decide to try and offer a 15.5 straight million deal just to see if that can lure him away but we also go in for Junior Melanda once again they said that uh, they wouldn't accept it so we were trying our very best um, to try and get him into the club we were trying to offer every player that we didn't really want so Boniati is a player that I would like to get I'd like to keep, but still, I prefer Junior Melanda than him. The next player we do decide to go in for is Romelu Lukaku. He's the 81-rated um, Belgium international. He's very, very promising. He's only got he's only 81 rated and 25 years old, but I do believe we can try and get up to an 85 rated if we can play him and score many, many goals with him. And he's actually on 100 grand a week, so he can actually afford his wages well. But we're trying off a 10 million plus Mandron to see if that will um, convince Everton to let him go. 
Nick Orford is also going to be leaving the club and going to Blackpool on loan. And um, Kalhanoglu, they say that they want £22.5 million for him or nothing. We haven't got that sort of money, which we actually we have got that sort of money, but we're not prepared to spend all of our money on one player. So therefore, we decide to offer um, Sami Amiobi plus uh, maybe £13.5 million. But I don't think that was going to work either because they just were convinced not to let him go. Junior and Milando, we decided to offer a straight £12 million bid off of which is his valuation, which... In all honesty, I still don't think they would um, agree with. And once again, every single offer we were putting in was getting rejected. This time, Everton rejected. They said they wanted 17.5 million plus Mandron for Romelu Lukaku. So he tried to offer 15 million plus Mandron just to see if that would lure him away. And we're really hoping that would. Simone scuffed the Luke over deal, and there's no way in a million years he'll be leaving unless they decide to pay like 20 something million over his valuation because he's one of the best goalkeepers I've tried, and I really do enjoy playing with him, and I feel very confident with the youngster in goal. So, Kalhanoglu, we were trying our very best to try and lure him into the club, as we was with um, Sammy, with um, Junior Melanda and also Romelu Lukaku, but they did actually, in fact, accept 15 point, uh, just 15 million plus Mandron, and we do decide to offer him a contract. We also get a bid, there from Arsenal for Mandron. We decide to up at 17.5 million. To be honest, we don't really like Mandron. He is not the player that I really enjoy. He's not the quickest. He just doesn't seem subtle enough and I wasn't enjoying him so therefore I was going to be offloading him but this time we decided to offer 7 million plus Voltschmidt uh, for Junior Melander and um, just they would not let him go but we do jump into our first friendly against Monaco here and we really hope we can get off to a good start and try and win our first friendly and um, we'd actually have uh, Digne starting in this game and he actually scored uh, Digne, Zivkovic and uh, Ayan as we ended up winning 4-2 but unfortunately Callum Chambers picks up a injury and he will be out for a few weeks but Romelu Lukaku is the first player that will be joining Portsmouth and what a fantastic signing it is as well. Callum Chambers is currently out for eight weeks so we're going to have to try and uh, maybe even try and uh, even more to try and get Junior Melander as he can play centre-back as well. But the next friendly was going to be up against Udinese and we ended up winning that one again. Amiobi and Zivkovic once again picking up the goals and the last friendly before we jump into our first competitive game will be up against Verona at home and thankfully we do end up winning this one 2-0 with Zivkovic picking up a goal once again. So we were really looking forward to our next competitive competitive game because it was going to be the uh, Community Shield but we do decide to offer one last thing for Junior Melander we decide to offer 6 million and Eric Dier or Eric Dyer the reason I decided to do that was because Eric Dyer does play um, at centre back but he hasn't been progressing as nicely as I would have thought he would be and um, that's the reason I was going to do it um, I believe in this one I do actually offer Dyer um, or maybe it'd be the next transfer offer but I think, yes I do, 6 million plus Eric Dyer and we just have to wait and see whether Fiorentina do come back and accept that offer or not. And as you can see there, they do come back and accept. So Junior Melander may be joining the club if he will accept his contract offer, which would be absolutely incredible if he did. So I was really looking forward to trying to lure him into the club and it would be brilliant if we could try and bring in the likes of um, uh, Junior Melander just to strengthen up our squad. And this was going to be the first competitive game up against Spurs at the Wembley Stadium. And it was going to be our first chance to win any title or silverware for the club and actually there Romelu Lukaku was going to be making his debut for the club as was Digne as was Draxler so them three players were going to be making their debuts I'm really hoping that they can get pulling a real good performance for us also we decided to go with Divock Origi instead of Eric Lamella because Eric Lamella is currently on a down he's not been playing very well so therefore we decided to go with um um Divock Rigi, but the first chance game does actually fall to us. Romelu Lukaku uses uh, pace and strength to outmuscle the Tongan, as, um, but unfortunately for us, Bagovic makes the save. It comes to Kingsley Coleman. He was also starting in front of um, Vitinho because Halilovic had to step into the uh, centre defensive mid role. But unfortunately, they do get a really good chance. Solado's running through. Ayan tries to catch him up. Solado cuts inside, has a really good shot, but an absolutely delightful save from Scuffer as he tips the ball onto the crossbar and it goes out wide for a corner. But in the 60th minute, they do pick up the ball. It comes to Kapu. Kapu slides the slide tackle and they actually hit the post and they put their shot wide of the post and uh, Scuffer does do very well to put him off um, very, very close on. But in the 84th minute, we do get a very good chance. Zivkovic deep possesses the ball. He is through one and one with Begovic but Begovic comes out on top and makes a save as he stands tall and denies um, Zivkovic from making um, debut or making a, a very very good impression for us in the very very early stages and uh, we do actually end up nearly losing the game there as um, Begovic does make the save 
as um, Scoffit makes say, sorry. But we are going to be jumping into the penalty shootout. Gorka steps up and he fires a shot into the back of the net. So I'm very sorry I haven't actually been uploading very recently. It's because I've currently been called up for um, the uh, Tarek men's squad, which is like the professional squad. And I've been training with them every single day of the week. So I'm really hoping that... Um, I'm going to try and get my YouTube uh, career back on track, but obviously football, as a footballer, um, it really interests me a little bit more, um, which I'm sure you guys do understand because it is a chance for me to maybe make it into the professional industry, which would be absolutely incredible if I currently could, but... We're going to jump back straight into this in the penalty shootout because it's starting to get interesting. It's currently 2-2. Eric Lamella steps up against Begovic. He has currently come on the come off the bench onto the field and he misses the penalty. It's going to be Chadley up against Scuffit. Scuffit doing his very utmost best to try and put him off. And uh, thankfully for us, Scuffit makes a fantastic save and denies Chadley. But Zivkovic, the goal scorer um, for us in the previous uh, friendlies, does actually thankfully put the ball into the back of net. So it, the pressure was now on Vertonghen, the Tottenham captain and centre-back. Scuff, it was telling me he was going that way. He does go that way, but unfortunately for us, the ball does creep underneath Scuff it and into the back of net. Kingsley Coleman up against Begovic and Kingsley Coleman doesn't miss a penalty as he fires that one into the back of net and the pressure was now back on Tottenham as it was currently 4-3. Dembele up against Scuff it. Scuff it once again dancing in the goal and uh, Dembele does put the ball into the back of net. So it was going right to the wire in this penalty shootout. Drax Draxler had to score, it was Draxler, he had to score and thankfully he puts the ball over the bar and that was it, I thought we'd lost because if Ericsson scored it would be all over and Ericsson hits an absolute worst penalty ever as he blasts it over the bar, it was going to be our centre back to try and put the pressure back on Tottenham and he does, he converts penalty so now if Davies missed we would win the title. Could he miss? Of course he missed. Scuffin makes a save and an absolute dramatic penalty shootout wins us the uh, Community Shield and the first type of silverware does come to Tottenham, uh, come to uh, Portsmouth, sorry. Um, so thank you so much for watching this episode. If you did enjoy it, please make sure to hit the like button down below. It's going to be very much appreciated. And we end up this episode with us confirming the deal for Junior Menander, which I'm very excited about, and uh, we have not, currently got no money left whatsoever, so we're going to have to try and either sell someone, or we'll have to try and maybe uh, loan a player, or loan a player out to loan a player in, or trade offer, we'll have to wait and see what we can try and do, but Junior Manor just joined the club, so that's it, thank you for watching, if you did enjoy it, please make sure to hit the like button down below, that's going to be very much appreciated, and I really do hope to see you next time, very very soon for the next episode of the Portsmouth Crew Mode, or the Tottenham Crew Mode, you have to wait and see, thank you, bye bye.